So if you want to be successful in algebra, you absolutely must know how to do a problem like this. So in some respects, this is what I would call an algebra must know. So what we're looking at here is a quadratic inequality. And the problem is y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 4. Now the solution to this problem is actually a graph. Now, uh, usually I like to have people put their answers to these questions into the comment section. Of course, you can't put a graph into the comment section, but maybe you can describe what the graph would look like. And better yet, maybe you can uh, list the steps that you need to take to solve this problem. Okay, so I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to do this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need additional help in mathematics, check out my full main math site at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's take a look at the correct answer now. So here is the solution. And these points right here, this is actually negative 2 right there. This would be 2, and right here is negative 4. So what we have is a graph of a parabola. And as I indicated, uh, the uh, solution to this is what we call a solution region. It's everything on the inside here to include the actual graph. So this is the answer. How did you do? Well, if you actually got this, well, that's pretty impressive, certainly impressive enough for a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%. And let's throw in some stars so you can have an extra special day for your awesomeness in algebra. Okay, so nice job. So a lot of you out there are kind of maybe thinking to yourself, well, you know, how do you even graph this? What does this even mean? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so what we're talking about, again, is something called quadratic inequalities, all right? This word quadratic is basically talking about second-degree polynomials, things like right here, this x squared minus 4. So I could, let's just go ahead and get rid of this uh, qua, um, inequality symbol here for a second and just uh, write this, y equals x squared minus 4, okay? So this is a quadratic equation. Now, I could write this as a quadratic function, basically the same thing, but hopefully you know uh, that we can graph this equation. So what's the graph or what's the general shape of a quadratic function? Well, it is a parabola. It's a U-shaped type thing like this, or it looks something like that, and you need to know how to graph parabolas in order to do quadratic inequality. So that's kind of the first kind of uh, prerequisite. Now, if you are studying algebra and you're not really comfortable with graphing quadratic inequalities, you still have confusions, uh, and, uh, confusions on any confusion, not confusions. I don't know. Maybe that's a word. <laughs> but anyways, if you are lost about any of this stuff, let me go ahead and just give you a couple quick recommendations. One, I have, a do, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel on all these topics, but really I would strongly suggest checking out one of my algebra uh, courses like an algebra one, algebra two, not pre-algebra because I don't really, you don't really get into quadratic functions in pre-algebra. So check out algebra one, algebra two, college algebra courses like that. I teach all of this stuff thoroughly. But anyways, you need to know how to graph a parabola, uh, which of course is the graph of a quadratic function. You also need to know how to solve quadratic equations. Okay, that's really important as well. So for example, here, we're going to want to solve the equation x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. And that's pretty easy to solve. But if you, again, if you're struggling with any of this stuff, these are two kind of sub-skills that you're going to need to be able to do in order to uh, solve a quadratic inequality. All right, but let's go and take a look at the steps here. So this is the general steps, and I asked you to put this into the comment section. So if you had something like this, then I think that's uh, pretty acceptable. So the first step is we need to uh, graph the parabola. Now you can see here that I have some dotted lines and I have a solid line, solid line here. So if our uh, problem, you can see this is y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 4. So we need to kind of focus in on uh, this symbol here. So if you're dealing with a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to 
when you actually graph your parabola, it's going to be a solid graph, something like this. If this happened to be a problem like, let's say, greater than, or not greater than or equal to, just greater than or less than, when you go to graph your parabola, it's going to be a dotted line. I'll speak more about that later, just so you kind of uh, know that when you do graph, you have to um, really uh, be aware of what you know symbol, uh, uh, inequality symbol that we're dealing with. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, how you graph, of course, these are some sub-steps. Um, there's some steps in here that we'll talk about, but basically what we need to do is get an accurate graph of the quadratic function on our graph paper. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test a point, okay, an xy point. And for the most part, the point we're going to be testing is 0, 0. There's uh, one exception to when we're not going to be testing the point 0, 0. Of course, I'm going to explain to you what it means to test a point. So we'll just hold on for that for one second. But I'm just giving you an outline of the steps we need to do. And then after we test a point like the point 0, 0, that's going to indicate to us where the uh, true region is okay there's a true and false region and then we're going to go ahead and shade the true region so these are the steps that we're going to follow and uh, let's go ahead and get into it right now uh, and of course we're going to start on uh, graphing this quadratic uh, inequality okay so right now we have y is greater than or, or equal to x squared minus 4. so for uh, this part of the problem don't even focus too much on the inequality symbol. Just think to yourself, how would I graph y equals x squared minus 4? Okay, so how would you graph uh, uh, this parabola here, y is equal to x squared minus 4? Again, hopefully you know how to graph parabolas. And there's a lot of different ways, you know, you can graph a uh, parabola here. This is super easy. Um, I'm, of course, I'm not going to try to teach all of these subskills here because this video would just go too long. But basically, right here, this is the y-intercept. This is negative 4 down here. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's negative 4, okay? And this x squared right there, this uh, coefficient in front of the x squared. In other words, this is a positive 1x squared minus 4 because there's a positive sign, not a negative sign, in front of the x squared. That means this is going to be a happy parabola, okay, like a happy face parabola. If this was negative, like a negative x squared, it would be a sad parabola, and it would look uh, upside down, okay? Again, if you don't know how to graph uh, parabolas, quadratic functions, you need to review that in order to do these quadratic inequality problems. Okay, so I could just say, oh, this is the uh, y-intercept and just draw a nice little parabola like so, but we can kind of take it a step further, okay? Uh, what we can do here is get the x and y-intercepts, all right? Now, this negative 4 is the y-intercept. Uh, let's just talk about the y-intercept real quick. The way you get the y-intercept for any function that you want to graph is just um, let x equal to 0, okay? And we're talking about the point where a graph intercepts the y-axis, okay? Like this point right here for whatever function, this is going on right here when x is zero, okay? So if we plug in zero into our function, we'll get the y-intercepts. So that's one way you can uh, identify it. Of course, right here, if you understand how to graph parabolas, you can just see, oh, this is the y-intercept. In other words, our parabola is gonna cross the y-axis at negative four. So just go ahead and mark that point there. Okay, so now to make this graph even more accurate, we can get the x-intercepts, and the x-intercepts are effectively solving this quadratic equation. So you're going to take this function here and set it equal to 0. So we're going to go x squared uh, minus 4 is equal to 0 and solve. So this is super easy to solve, so we're going to say x squared, uh, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. We're going to move that 4 to the other side, so we're um, left with x squared is equal to 4. How do we solve for x? Easy. We take the square root of both sides, so x is equal to positive and negative 2. Again, if you're lost on any of this stuff, you need to review what you have to review, okay? But just, you know, it's okay to be, like, uh, lost on something. Like, I don't get this. That's actually a good thing because then you have something very specific you can work on. All right, so these are what we call the zeros or the x-intercepts, or the solution to the quadratic equation. And there's another uh, word for them, too, roots. It's a lot of words for <laughs> uh, these solutions. But what we're talking about 
And these are real number solutions. So this parabola is going to go through the x-axis at 2 and negative 2. Okay, these are real roots. So now when we go to uh, draw our parabola, now we have to keep in mind that this is going to be a solid line. Again, if this was just greater than or equal or greater than or less than, okay, it would be dotted line, okay? And we'll talk about uh, the reasons or uh, the reasons why that is important now. So we could just go ahead and sketch our lovely little parabola just like so. All right, so that is the first step. And uh, if you understand that, that's pretty good. And I mean, really, that's probably the hardest part of the problem, but let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, so here is our lovely um, parabola. So I hope you're learning something from this video. And if that's the case, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification. This really does help me out on YouTube. Now, if you need additional help in math, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and get back to the problem. So that's step one. So what we're trying to do is identify uh, which region is true and which region is false. So basically we have a true region or a false region. There's, uh, we're looking at this parabola like the inside and outside, okay? Either the inside is true and the outside is false or the outside is false and the inside is, uh, uh, no, say the outside is true and the inside is false, right? So it's one or the other. So you don't have to identify, all you have to do is identify one point to whether it's true or false, and then we can shade the true region. And I'm gonna to explain to you what that means here in just one second. But anyways, this is the result of our step one. So now, okay, we kind of go back to our notes. We did step one. And what we want to do now is focus in on step two, which of course is we're going to test a point. We're going to test the point zero, zero. Okay, so what does that mean? You can see I already did the work here, but where is the point zero, zero located? So X, Y, right? That's an ordered pair, a coordinate. So zero, zero is located here at the origin. Okay, we're testing inside the parabola. I'm testing this region in here. And when we're testing a region uh, inside or outside the parabola, we could just test any point that's inside the parabola. I could test this point. Here, let me use a different color. I could use this uh, point, test that point, test this point. It doesn't make a difference. As long as it's on the inside of the parabola, that's perfectly fine. But listen, why make your life harder? The easiest point to test is zero, zero. If you can't test zero, zero, test the point one, one. Use simple numbers. No need to be a math hero and take on some, you know, uh, more challenging numbers. Just use a simple point. Now, when can't we use zero, zero? Well, the only time uh, we cannot use zero, zero is if our parabola actually goes through the origin. If it goes through the point zero, zero, then we have to pick a different point. So you can't pick a point that's actually on the parabola because we're trying to determine which side of the parabola is true or false. So what does it mean uh, to be true or false? Well, I'm gonna show you this right now. So again, we're testing this point, zero, zero, which is located right there. And we're gonna plug in these values. Uh, X is uh, uh, equal to zero and Y is equal to zero, which of course is the point zero, zero. We're gonna plug all this in into this inequality and let's see what it tells us when we do that. Okay, so again, we have uh, the point zero, zero. We're gonna test it into our inequality. So I'm gonna plug in uh, zero for Y and zero for X. You can see I'm just gonna replace these X and Ys with zero. So zero squared is zero, all right? I'm looking at right here and zero squared. Uh, this is not square, this is just zero. Look, see, I, I, even when I do this stuff, I can catch a little tiny error. And that is a, I'm glad I made that little, little mistake because when you're doing math, if you make a little error, as long as you catch it before you turn in your work, right, to your teacher, that's perfectly fine. That's why you always wanna be double checking, triple checking, because it's easy to make a mistake. As long as you correct it before you turn in your stuff, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so we have zero for y, and then zero squared uh, for x squared minus four. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just simplify this. This is just gonna be zero is greater than, zero squared, of course, is zero. So we end up with this statement, zero is greater than negative four. So we have to ask ourselves, is this true or false? Okay, is zero greater than negative four? 
Now, hopefully you're, uh, none of you said, no, that's false. No, that is true, right? Let's just make sure we understand. Here's zero on the number line. Here's negative four. Okay, numbers to the right of numbers over here are greater than. So yes, indeed, zero is greater than negative four. That is true, okay? Meaning that this point, this point in here is true. So this is our true region, i.e. any point that we select in here will satisfy this inequality, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, just kind of put a little point there. That is true. And what do we do next? Well, uh, let me kind of go back over here. Let's go back up to our notes. So we tested a point zero, zero. In fact, it is true. So we're gonna go ahead and shade the true region. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so pick a nice color. When you're doing math, doing stuff like this, you want to um, always use pencil. You can kind of use uh, kind of different variations of your pencil shading, but color pencils come in handy as well. So you're just gonna put some nice shading in here like so. Whatever you do, don't like you know scribble on your paper like that. Just be nice and neat so your teacher knows what you're talking about. So let's go ahead and, and um, talk about this point where sometimes your graph, okay, if it's greater uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you're going to have a solid line as your graph. If it's greater than or less than, it will be a dotted line. Now, what's the point there? Well, this is a very important kind of uh, little detail. What we're talking about is the following. Uh, points that are actually on the parabola, okay, will actually be part of the solution region, okay? Uh, so uh, any point that's actually on the parabola will make this true as well, okay? So that's why, you know, a solid line, uh, you know, that's what it's indicating. If we had a dotted line, okay, so for example, if our parabola was like so, and we had a point that was on the parabola, that would not be a part of of the solution region. But uh, let's go ahead and just kind of test our, our theory here, or not our theory, but let's just kind of reinforce something. So I'm saying all the points in here, you know, if we test any point into our little uh, quadratic inequality, it will end up with a true statement. So what we're saying here is, if I test a point outside of this, we should end up with a false statement. So let's go ahead and test a point uh, outside of here, and I picked a lovely point. Let's pick the point five, negative one. So that would be what? One, two, three, four, five, negative one. That point right there, this should be false because it's outside of the true region, right? So let's just go ahead and verify that just to kind of quench our curiosity. So here is our quadratic inequality. Let's go and plug in five and negative one into our uh, inequality. So of course, five will be, uh, we'll plug that in for uh, X and then negative one, we'll plug it for Y. And you can see the work right here. We're gonna end up with negative one is greater than 21. You can see all the work right here, uh, what I've done. So is negative one greater than 21? No, right, that is false. So it kind of just verifies that. So you could like, for example, pick a point way over here and then just test that point. Oh, that point's false, therefore inside is true. But always use zero, zero as it is the easiest point to use. Okay, so this is how you do quadratic inequalities. And this was a very simple kind of um, uh, parabola or quadratic um, function to work with. You certainly can have much more complex uh, inequalities and inequalities um, in terms of functions they are everywhere in mathematics, so you need to know how to do them. Again, if I'm saying this is an algebra must know, I really mean what I'm saying, okay? So if you struggle uh, with any part of this problem, don't panic, okay? What you need is a nice little to-do list, okay? The worst thing you could do is just say, oh, I don't need to, you know, or maybe just cross your fingers and say, I hope I don't see these problems again. No, you will see these problems. They're very important in mathematics that you know how to do. So just work on what you don't know and improve. So again, if you need help with quadratic functions and equalities, et cetera, probably just check out my Algebra 1 program or Algebra 2 program, program and you'll be good to go. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.